Well, thank you for staying with us on the AM Show. Time now for us to get into our big stories. You probably know him as Nana KKD, uh, fashionista, broadcaster, uh, one who speaks his mind freely. Anyway, it's another morning and we're having breakfast with Kwesi Che Dakwa. He joins us on the show. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so happy to see you. It's, it's a real pleasure to see you again. A little birdie told me you've been busy um, building your capacity. Yeah, I've been very busy, but you know... But it's uh, not in broadcast media, it's in the law. Uh, yes, yes, among other things. Please don't leave broadcast media. I won't. Whatever you do, we still need you on air. Glowing, you know, you're leaving me feeling goosebumpy. No, because I, I was watching the, the vetting of the... CJ nominee. Of the Supreme Court nominee. Mm. And I was so heartbroken because for a few seconds, I was, you know, in a, in a crazy loop. I had somebody, you know, keep saying predator, predator. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, the word is predator. 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 Right. predator. Right. Why are you saying predator, predator? Mm. And you see, the, what, the reason I was worried is, in broadcasting, we're, we're reminded every day that we educate, we inform, and we entertain. Now, the House of Parliament is a very important house in our nation. And it's important that the people who go there, whether they are speaking Chi or Eva or Hausa or, you know, whatever language, make a conscious effort to get it right. We can't make these mistakes because what happens is, our young will pick it from us because they think we know when actually we don't. I guess it's the usual problem with people assuming that, oh, my professor at the university, if he says it, then it must be right. I mean, uh, talking about the systemic problems, we still say okra instead of okra, and we still add very <laughs> to superlatives. You know, so no, it, no, it's quite a funny it's, system. It's, we have, we. But. it's the lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. And the lowest common denominator has a place in society. Every one of them is killed in something. I was telling a, a professor friend of mine on my PhD program that, what about Kichirida? I said, David, I'm going to Kichirida. And I'm saying, what about Kichirida? What about Kichirida? What about Kichirida? What about Kichirida? Exactly. But when it comes to language, especially in our highest house of debate in the country, it's important that whatever language we speak, we make a conscious effort to get it right. And speaking, and that's of, why I, rem I remembered you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Speaking of the Kishri bits, it, it, it is true. If you've never balanced, performed that balancing act, you will never understand what it's like. You take it for granted until you have to do it. But since you started off on that trajectory, speaking right, so to speak, you're a journalist. Essentially, you're a broadcaster. A First and foremost, I'm a journalist. That's that's my life. Everything I've done is essentially public communication, and it started with journalism and public relations. Mm. Uh, when you look at the landscape in, in Ghana today, the state of journalism, I mean, recently we got that, is it, Kodeo report about journalists and how ill-paid they are in most circles. I'm not saying in every circle, but if you pick the top maybe one, two, three percent who are making something good, how about the 97 percent who basically have to scrape or eke out a living? That's one end of it. Then it's also about journalistic practice. How do you feel we're faring? We're not doing so well on the Freedom of Speech Index, but in terms of the practice itself, what are we doing? Sadly, it's, it's a conversation we had at the International Center for Journalists way back in 1992. I suggested that we have some basic examinations, you know, entry level, intermediate level, and before people become sub-editors, some basic examinations. So. Mm -hmm. People know that this is what you do, this is what you don't. And one of my colleagues at the time, I don't remember where he was from, but he said, look, uh, King, you have to be very careful because the minute we start bringing these examinations in, we're going to be squashing freedom of speech. And I said, how is that? He says, because even the unqualified must have a voice. And I said, but if they want to be journalists, there must be some basic code of ethics and some basic practices that they must learn before they go on air. And we, we talked and talked about it, but from 92 to date, I think I will re-suggest that those who want to practice, especially in broadcast media and in print media, 
Maybe later we'll talk about the bloggers. But for now, broadcast media and print media, there must be some basic training and basic examinations. And if you fail, just like with the law or like with medicine or like with architecture engineering. and engineering and nursing, you cannot practice. Or chartered accountancy. I, do not, I mean, all of these have why, bodies that regulate. Why should it do. be that those who fail in everything must join those who are you know, exceptional in their field of endeavor and also assume the position of being able to address the nation? That's sad. They mm. must be tested. And we need to take a lot of people off air. It's very important. We need to take a lot of people off air. Uh, you, that, you, that, you, you want some flowers to grow? Then you must continue uprooting, uprooting the weeds. Because the way it's going, very soon, the weeds will be more than the flowers. Mm. And then our children will grow to think, oh, this is what our parents consciously cultivated. So the weeds become the new flowers. Mm. Well, interesting perspective on which to start off the conversation. Let's, let's get into some pertinent issues, starting with, it's been how many months now since we last spoke? It's been a, it's, oh, we last it's been a bit of time. time. In September last year. Great. But the last time um, I spoke on the national broadcaster is 17th August 2022. <laughs> I do recall, and I know the situation there, but looking at everything that is happening in our country, from the last time we spoke, to now. I remember the last time we spoke about the National Cathedral, we spoke about Keno Friata and the economy, we spoke about. We'll be getting into these issues. Gallant Between then and now, yep. have we got any better? Have we got any worse as a country? What is your reading of the picture? What a synthetic world we are living in. Things have gotten worse. And anybody who cannot see that needs to have their eyes checked. Things have gotten worse. Things have gotten worse um, because there doesn't seem to be a clear plan where this nation is going. For every plan, there must be a purpose. And then for every purpose, there must be some targets that we are working at reaching. And then we must say, are we looking at our needs before our wants? As you and I speak today, it's just been found that apparently some miners have been using cyanide. Cyanide so they can get their gold quicker. What will Sanai do? It will poison the water. It will kill people. And we have a president who has appointed people to work with him to safeguard, first and foremost, the wellness of the nation. Because if we are not well as a people, we cannot even start discussing prosperity. Cyanide to mine gold illegally in Ghana. And we are living with it. We have broken down homes that were built for judges, made those judges leave that space, and we are spending huge sums of money to accommodate those judges. And we have built a dam on a site where we claimed we were going to build a cathedral in a nation that is in dire need of hospitals. You say we've built a dam because there's a... There's a hollow there that has not been filled. Now, Some people say it's the most expensive hollow anywhere in the world. I like, you know, I like to think that there was a purpose for everything that was being done. So maybe the thinking was, if we don't even get to cathedral level, at least it will be a dam for a while. Who knows, we might be able to generate electricity for the ridge area. You never know. And, and then you look at the, the mad set deal, which people want to forget. A mad set was seven cities. But Ghanaians sat down and watched our brothers and sisters in government supply math sets to our children for something in the neighborhood of 80 cities or more with some accoutrements which the children and the teachers did not ask for. And now there is yet another promise mm. that we are going to replace your textbooks laptops. with laptops. Mm. So who is also going to cream the top of that? Let's stop this thing. We are a rich nation led by a poor thinking leadership that is enriching themselves by making the people of Ghana poor. Because like I said, and I was hoping it will go to court so I can bring all the documents to show, the motivation for most of our borrowing was the enriching of the few people who were influencing the borrowing to make the nation poor whilst they got richer. Now look where we are. Mm. Look where we are. Look what monies we've spent on the dam 
and rage, and we've gotten 600 million. 600 million, isn't that money that just one group can give you? In fact, you can that you money that the cost of, isn't of, that, of what you call the dam, and it's in the region of $400 million plus. Isn't that's, that, that's almost the same as the first tranche we've Accra got. Accra Friendship Act. Club, of which I'm a member, or East Legon Executive Club, of which you know, many of my friends are members, must be able to raise that money for you if they believe that you will use the money prudently. Are you saying KKD doesn't, doesn't believe that the NPP, this administration, is going to use IMF money conscientiously for Ghana? That's what Mr. President said. Did you listen to him when he spoke yesterday? I, I, the 29th update on COVID-19. Well, I watched him with sadness because I've told you, I have lost faith in this administration. I am just praying that this administration will be able to stay alive and live peacefully and hopefully we can stop ex gratia for these people who have ingratiated themselves with the people of Ghana and made things worse for the people of Ghana. In a nation where young girls cannot buy sanitary towels because there are 14 different taxes on sanitary towels, we have a council of state whose advice the president does not need to take, but is still paid and they also receive ex gratia. And these people are still in leadership and we are thinking, is this the best we can get? Like they said in the Wakanda movie, is this your king? You say we're a rich nation led by a poor thinking leadership. leadership. Yep. And then you talk about people cutting deals. Should I give you another reason to, why to, we're poor thinking leadership? You could, but just let me pose the question. So that we are a people who have leaders who like to cut corners to fill their pockets rather than Without to line doubt. their pockets rather Without than provide doubt. For, the, for the people. What, what, do you, what then do you make of that GNPC tussle? You know, I'm, the one involving Freddie Blay, the energy minister, cease and desist. Freddie Blay has become Pontius Pilate. He says, I wash my hands. Right. He says he's now going to cease and desist. But, but what does that mean? Mm. No, what does that mean? Look, even the class prefect... When there's too much noise in the class, right? And the school board or the governors of the school come by to say, what's happening in this class? The class prefect cannot say, I wash my hands. Now, if a 10 year old will not say, I wash my hands when his class is making noise, how does somebody at that level of government say, I cease and desist? What, what does that mean? Look, my mother said something that I wrote down. You know, I go and sit with her, you know, she's going to be 83 in September, and, uh, no, 84 in September, and I, I converse with her, and then she says the most, the most profound things, and I had to write this down. I'm like, Mom, I'm going to write a whole book on this. I say, Kwe si che ye, akuma pa eni akukuduro, no kware ka eni fawohoma edemufwa. Akomapa, any akukudro. No kwari kan, any faun huma, e demu befua. Sa niyama we, oni frafu mpo ohu, ni anasu esi mpo oti. Enti nukure ni egana. Ye mpenye mfuwa, ni wama ye yi wame ya mbikasi wame nye ye mpenye mfuwa, biko ye mpenye mfuwa ye papa mo ye nananomo, ene ya hen mfu ni ye mame mo. These people are our elected public servants we have given them all the perks so they will live well with their families so they will do right by the people so they can speed through traffic so they will be safe and nobody can attack them so they will have a policeman looking you know after them so nobody can attack them pay them well so they can also pay their domestics well and how do they serve us how do they serve us when people's fathers go to hospital and they say there's no bed and they die, and you say, okay, I'm aware of that, but I'm building a cathedral because I made a promise to my God. So what, what, what next? Somebody comes and says, well, I worship stones, so I'm going to go to the Afajatu mountain and commission that whole area and make it um, the stone grove and also develop it into something with whatever money. No, we don't bring you into power to come and do what you want to. Like Thomas Sowell said, People will tell you that this is 
the public interest when in actual fact they are only doing their selfish desires. Is that what you saw the in the country, Freddie Blay case? The country is... Is that what you saw in the Freddie Blay instance? But of course. But of course. You see, and... They, he all says these, his hands are clean. All these things must go to court. Now, citizens are going to have to take cases to court. Look, there's one I want to go to court. I want us to enact something on nepotism. You know when uh, JFK made his brother, a uh, 35-year-old who had never tried a case in court, mm -hmm. the attorney general, right? After he had died and gone, even though people said he was a good president, and he also made, um, was it um, his, his brother-in-law, head of the Peace Corps, the people said no. So after he had died and another person was in power, they put forth a document that was enacted into law. They act on nepotism. Mm. So once you're president, you can't employ any relative. Should we get to that point in this country? We, we, I mean, this, no, we this, have to this, because this, the, this, this the, administration, the, this administration, administration has shown us that nepotism is real. But, but, but it's isn't, ugly. Isn't it shocking because it's ugly. there were complaints about the previous administration and probably the which only person that they could be should have done it was, which was is Bawa why? Mokhtari. No. And, and now, uh, as many would say, there's, there's quite a list. The nepotism is ugly. Look. There are some people who do not have fin finances to come and give you money for your campaign, but they queue to vote, right? Mm. And they have studied, they have mastered their, their, their area of work. You say, it's got to be my family before everybody else. So we have to think of a law on nepotism. Mm. This is something I expect the Ghana Bar Association to be talking about because I think their, their silence in this administration is deafening. Mm. Let's, it's let's... deafening. Is it because the president is a lawyer? So it's a courtesy to one of us? It's worrisome. I'm asking the question. Mm. It's worrisome. And others have posed the same question. But on the bit about, yes, we're talking about these shady deals that supposedly, and no one is saying that that deal was shady, but I guess as the cookie crumbles, we'll find out when we read the documentation. And we look at some of the issues that we've seen in the offshore situation. But ex gratia. I have talked about it with clarity. I, I, I want you to delve into it one more time. And it is this. Should we scrap it? Or should we proceed with it? Consider Kwame Pienim, for example, economist. He was speaking over the weekend and said, look, if you're a president and you come, and we have a vicious cycle where almost every six years we go to the IMF anyway, if you're a president, you come, you lead us into an IMF situation. You don't get the, the benefits. No, you shouldn't when, get when, 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 when you are no longer president. And if you're, you're in some other capacity, minister or whatever, and you don't deliver, no ex gratia for you. I mean, there have to be some benchmarks. But on the back of that, there's been a tussle. The Daily Guide captures it uh, this morning. Mahama Nanakomiya tussle over ex gratia. Former President Mahama. What, 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 is, what is the President saying? What is Nanakumiya saying? I'll take a stance. So the former President has said, if he gets the reins of power one more time, he'll scrap this bit. Ex gratia. He, see, the thing is, then, he can't then, then, he can't because you have, says, you have to go to Parliament. And yeah. those are the processes. Exactly. As for the processes to be followed, yep. <laughs> they are in there. Fantastic. But the point is, Nanakumiya says, but you are benefiting from it. You are a current beneficiary of the system. Then the former president comes to clarify in a tweet. He says, my friend Nanakumiya, really sad what politics can, can do. Politics can do to a fine mind. I don't take ex gratia. I receive a monthly pension. So you're, you're telling me that a what? former member of parliament, Nanakumiya, did not know the difference between the monthly pension and ex gratia? That's the bone of contention now. Okay. Now, I think ex gratia should be scrapped, and I'll tell you why. We have the Social Security and National Insurance Trust. If you pay into that, depending on your profession, and depending on your position, you may go home with your full salary during your pension. For some people, they get less. So these people who are already in the highest positions, who would go home with perhaps your full salary when they went on pension, are the ones who are still looking for more. Let's serve the needy, not the greedy. Ghana, listen. 
Serve the needy, not the greedy. You've been given so much. You have so much influence. Now you're going home and we collect these amounts of money and we say, take it. And if you don't go home and you come back to parliament again, you sit there and you take it again. I mean, look, we have to question our elders. Not all our elders were brilliant. <laughs> Let's accept that immediately. You know, from the days of slavery to now, not all our elders were brilliant. And some of them looked at the exigencies of the time and put certain things into law. But not all laws make sense. There was a time when slavery was in law. Mm. So are we going to say it was a good law? Exgratia idea is a bad idea. If the people who are getting it will stand up and say, like uh, former President John Mahama has said that, you know, I will speak to my people and I'll say, if I'm going to give you an appointment, you must accept you're not going to take exgratia. And then they go through the court processes, go through parliament and take it off our books. That would be a very good So thing. that would be your approach? Of course. We, we need to scrap it, but we need to scrap it lawfully. Mm. A president can scrap it. You know that. Because the president can propose it and get his majority in parliament to scrap it. Seeing as the way we vote in this country is often just based on partisan lines, not even based on constituency lines. I doubt if people are having conversations with their constituents and their constituents are saying, hey, I, we don't want the e-levy. I mean, they go into parliament, they are whipped in line, and they vote the party line. Mm. So, and that is why I, I think in the same way as broadcasters may have to be um, uh, tested in some basic examination before they, they go on air or go and write in the papers, so too parliamentarians must have some basic aptitude tests because I think some are just freeloaders. When you, when, when, really when you read so. the Constitution, the 1992 really Constitution so. of Ghana, it, it stipulates what the qualifications are, sound mind and all of that. Beyond that, you sound think mind. we should, beyond sound that, mind. you think we should still... Many are mad. Take are them roaming. through. <laughs> Many are mad. Few are roaming. Mm. Are you suggesting most of our parliamentarians are not, not up to most, the task? Not most. I think some are not up to the task. Like which ones? I will not name them, but some are not up to the task. And amongst the parliamentarians, they will tell you. It's a fact. In every field of endeavor, there is a small percentage that does most of the work. And the rest, freeloaders, they just come on through. So they are the ones who will be instructed, vote this way and let's go. Because I want to see the voting record of every parliamentarian. And I pray to God Almighty that we'll also get to a point where this secret voting will even stop. Why are you so scared that you don't want us to know how you vote? Whatever is brought to parliament, you must be able to defend your vote. But looking at the nature of our politics, it is the secret vote, for example, that gave us a Speaker of Parliament, for the first time in the Fourth Republic, who is from the opposing side. If it is known, your party system whips you. And if you are known to go against the party's stance, you know there are consequences, right? Uh, so what, what are we doing with our parliament? Is it party first before the nation? I guess I would we have, all have contributed to I it. Would we have, ask ourselves. I would have thought that, well, maybe I'm an idealist, but I think it should be the nation first, your constituents next, and then your party. Mm. Who elected you to go there? You know, are we serving the nation or are we serving the party? Which one is it? So maybe in Africa, uh, we, we, we may have to go to the one-party state. So that way you'd have no choice but serve the nation. Because this whole partisan politics, look, the worst performing person ever in the voting process, uh, uh, in the in the what, vetting process in parliament, got the highest vote. <laughs> the worst performing ever. You know, confused, couldn't answer your questions, but they got the highest vote. Some people say, well, people were bribed. I don't know. Some people say, oh, the women said, oh, we have to stand by the woman. I don't know. Some people say, oh, the party said we should vote. I don't know. Are you referencing Mavis Hawakumsen? Of course. Nice woman. But she was the worst performing at her vetting.
Mm. Compare that to the Supreme Court's nominee. I'm not saying she should be skilled in the law, but you must be able to speak, you know, proficiently about what you're going to oversee. And, and I think that ministry is even another waste of money. The U.S. Fisheries has, the U.S. has one Department of Agriculture. One. And then like in our case, it and could be a ministry for and agriculture. That, and that is a bigger nation. Same with China. The U.S. has how many departments in cabinet? 15? The U.K., 20-something? China, 21? And we have how many ministries? Why do we do this to ourselves? Is it because of black inferiority? Or is it because we just accept that we are not competent and we cannot manage a large group of people because we know who we are appointing and we know they are not capable, so we must, we must share it. I mean, make it look like everybody's running a little lotto kiosk. But don't you forget, when the president started on this trajectory and there was talk about it, he said he was a man in a hurry and that to a, a, a achieve his goals, he had to put a lot more people to ramp it up. A hurry into debt. And everybody blames it on Ukraine. And Ukraine in a war is still feeding themselves. Mm. What's wrong with us? Look, let me tell you what. Every job must be first about competence. And if you have the competence, find the purpose for which you want that job. And when you find the purpose, choose your focus and do it. Look, free education started by Kwame Nkrumah, great idea. People came, moved Kwame Nkrumah off, tried to destroy everything he had done. But the good thing is, a good follower of Kwame Nkrumah came and said, we will build more schools. We will get back to the free education thing. And another good follower of Kwame Nkrumah came and said, yeah, we will do the free SHS. Right? But for me, I said it from the start, that I don't think that Jospong, wants his children to get free SHS. I don't think Kennedy a Japan wants his children to get free SHS. I don't think, and a good number of people mm. want their children to get free SHS. If my younger sister pays for her child to go to a private school. So why do we want to use this political, uh, what's it called, talk to waste the state's resources. We that bring the money. That brings me to the IMF deal. And of course, because in, in discussing part of our flagship programs and all of that, when they spoke about free SHS, they said it was poorly targeted. targeted. But of course, that's what I'm saying. We heard from the information minister say that, look, right from the onset, this was our positioning. We no. never meant to target no. anyway. No. I mean, it's, it's, I mean if, if I'm reflecting properly what he said, we are reaching out, spreading the net. I like we agree. don't want to we don't want to skew it in a certain direction. Like now, uh, now we've got we've got the IMF deal. I'm, I'm just putting it together so you can respond. We've got the IMF deal. Six hundred million has hit our kitty, the central bank. The president, in speaking we about must, it on an international get, platform, we must behave to get the next tranche. We we must. <laughs> there's a, there's a stick. We must behave. And if you don't act right, you'll not get the carrot. You'll exactly. get the stick. But Mr. President was touting and how we got our staff level agreement, probably in one of the fastest, and that 10 months we've got an IMF deal, almost in record time and all of that. Yes, that, that, that was how he spoke about it. How do you feel about that IMF deal? Sometimes when I listen to my dear brothers in the MPP speak, you know, they sound like the team that goes to get a draw with another team, and they say, we won, 0-0. Zero, zero. How did you win, 0-0? Zero, zero. You're broke. Look, I'd like the producer to play that video because, you know, I don't want to hear from the opposition. I want to hear from the people in power. Because one, one gentleman um, who is in the MPP, who is not one of the elected leaders, he does well to look after his wife and children, um, who writes stuff about government even before <laughs> the, the Minister for Communication speaks about it said certain things about going to the IMF. And you have the video, so would you be kind enough to play it? Or whilst you wait for the video, we'll, we'll do that in a bit. Because if you listen to the things that they said, I think um, 
Gabi Ochri Dako spoke about it. Uh, Mahamadu Baumia, Baumia also spoke about it. Abronye also spoke about it. I made a conscious effort to send all the videos to your producer earlier. So if they don't play it, I have beef with them. Because, you know, this is... We are going to play it. There's, we'll an, play audio, it there's an audiovisual medium, and I, I don't like us to do radio and television. It's important that we support what we're saying with the videos. Because when you can hear from the horse's own mouth, there is no need for gentlemen to be neighing. <laughs> Let's just continue on that trajectory. We'll be playing the video shortly. But the IMF deal, like I've said, it's, it's come through. You've expressed your own concern about where we're headed with this entire enterprise. In the midst of all of that, there are those who have been pretty skeptical about what the future holds. Because again, in this interaction, our, our own president, Nana Dunko Kufuado, uh, sort of shared the idea that we'll be looking forward to getting back to the capital market, borrowing market. And some found that shocking. You're in an IMF situation and you're eager. In fact, even the practicality of it is, is being called into question because- We are a broke nation. We are a broke nation and we should look at this as leaders of our own households. Not all of us want to build palaces, but everybody wants to be able to provide food, clothing, shelter, and some medical care for their family. Then Ooh. after that, we can get everything else. We can't do these. And so we have gone to somebody to help us do this. But before going to that somebody to help us do these, we stood in front of uh, President Macron of France and said, uh, we're going Ghana beyond aid. And yeah. you know, we, don't I recall. Need, we don't need that. I mean, diplomatically, I looked at that and I said, this is a sham. And immediately, I remembered a great man called Anan Kato. And I was thinking, how does Anan Kato see this? Because here we are saying, oh, we went to, to the Paris club. We went to the Paris club. Who are the Paris club? Are the French part of it? You stood there and embarrassed your president saying, we don't need you this. We, uh, we can do this. We can do this. And now you are there begging. Let's be fair. What we are doing is begging. We are begging. And not only are we begging, we are leaving debts for our children and our children's children to come, whilst a few are plundering the state to make sure they safeguard their children. And this is, is what is happening. Now, let me, let me come to another one. Are you aware that electricity tariffs are going up by 18%? Well, they've been going up for a while, together yes, with but, water tariffs. but another 18% now. Mm. So when you have to announce your electricity tariffs going up by 18% and you tell the people with only less than three weeks notice, how do you expect the factory worker who earns 500 a month but whose transport to work is 500 a month? Yeah? Think of how they're going to iron their clothes and even read a book right. and even charge their phone. How then do you expect the one who also earns even 5,000 a month but pays for their children's school fees, have their children learn in the evening and in the very hot, you know, uh, weather of Ghana today, even turn on the air conditioner for only three hours a day. People just don't have the money. And some people have wasted our resources. And you know, when I look at the, the foot soldiers in all the parties, I'm like, Sabuta Fraje, Okwasiape, Enayitiane Shuasun Prince. You're sitting there. The people who give you coins, who spit for you to lick, are safeguarding the future of their children. And they are passing on these tariffs to you. And you don't realize there's something wrong. Mm. We are a highly indebted nation now. Aren't we worse off than when we were going to Hippic? In fact, aren't we worse off now than in the administration of the current president's father when he was ceremonial president and the current finance minister's father when he was minister of finance with their borrowing that led to Kutue Champon saying yin tia. In other words, you're, saying that, you're saying that about 45, 50 plus years on after this era that you speak of. We are back to a worse situation. Ghana is actually worse off. This is the, who doesn't know this? Where are the mm. economists? You see, we pretend that a few people are the only ones who can think. Everybody can think. 
We acknowledge that some people have gone to study to be in certain fields of endeavor, but everybody who has to balance a budget in their home can think. Every housewife knows that when it gets to a certain point, you tell the children you can't take so much of the toilet roll. You can't boil the water till it's boiling like you're going to pluck the feathers off a chicken before you go and have your bath and then pour cold water in it. You have to manage. Cut your coat according to your shirt. What's wrong with us? So we're all sitting here, tickling ourselves and laughing and listening to speeches and promises. I want to hear Baumia and what he said about borrowing at the time when the previous administration went to the IMF. I mean, it's interesting because you listen to, to hear the likes Abby. of Dr. Mohamedou. I, want to I was hear going them. to mention his yeah, name. I want to hear them. Because there's that popular video where he talks about the fact that, you know, I, it, it was on news file with some Zaladi. Gana Jimmy, you. Yes, I agree. Gana Fuen Jimmy. Gana. I mean, we could, we could dig up my, my team is looking at news. But we can. Jimmy. Mm. Ghanaians are not stupid. We don't want war. We don't want battles. But we are not stupid. Even those who voted for you are whispering and saying, this is so bad. It's so bad. Let, let, How else do you want us to say it? Let, let me just, let me just, maybe if, if we can get snippets of that conversation, because I've I seen sent it in both recent, videos to in, your, your in producer. recent times. Uh, the one where Gabi uh, you know, talks about what it means to go to the IMF. I recall because I saw it again see, recently, and we'll before, check out. Did, before speaking about those videos, before yeah, I sent them, I sent them. Okay, to, so we'll, we'll to, check them out. To. Um, your, your, your guy. And I, I said, with Gabi, I had to, you know, put the disclaimer there. He's not an elected official. He just happens to have some relatives in government. And he happens to be able to tweet stuff out even before the Minister of Communication, uh, you know, uses it. But the point is, he said these things and the party supports him. But let's say we don't use Gabi because he's not an elected official. He has no power except for those who are groveling and fawning, who will beg anybody as soon as they know their relative is in power. Then let's go and listen to Dr. Maud, Mahmoud Baumia and listen to what he said. He says, when you have no ideas, when you, you're, you're bereft of ideas, when you don't know how to run the economy, that is when you go to the IMF. And mm. now you're saying, oh, I never wanted to go to the IMF. The NDC told you, they said, look, we've gotten to a point where we need help. Go now or it's going to be worse. And you didn't. And you didn't. And you didn't. And eventually, what happened? Eventually, what happened? So the debt is for all of us. We're going to pay more for water. We're going to pay more for petrol. We're going to pay more for electricity. And now, we're also going to have the tow boots back. But they have already been destroyed. Because somebody's brain fart led all the toll boots to stop working. When we knew full well, we needed that money from the toll boots. So are we now to sit here and believe that the people running this country are brilliant? Brilliant, my derriere. The only people who call them brilliant now are the people who say they are eating ice cream when they are licking the exit of people's human anatomy. But the thing is, it shows clearly because the brown stuff will be seen on your lips and your tongue. Where is the brilliance? Where are you saying the brilliance? then that... This is incompetence. Not, you are not impressed by... Impressed? I mean, impressed? this administration has touted... Impressed? You hear the president touted, speak show and me he, results. he talks about the fact that his vice president is very able. In fact, only yesterday he made mention of that. And... Uh, you have these words for them? It's sad. This is what a lot of Ghanaians are thinking, right? Those who wait for food to be pushed off the tables so when it falls on the ground, they eat it like dogs, will come and stand on TV and give you analysis and say they are impressed. But deep inside, when they lay down with their wives, their wives look them in their eyes and say, Ah, and me kun, where Jimmy sa? If you can't tell the truth, shut up. Are you saying you have no hope in terms of our economic, just, no. our economic recovery? We have the IMF deal now. No, it's, no, it's, right it's, now. It's, a, it's a deal breaker, so to speak. What's the cry on our heart? It's a deal breaker. Hope. Right now, our hope is in the IMF. I don't know which 38-year-old boy from the IMF is going to be telling us what to do. 
But for all... Uh, yeah. I, I like the reference. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> Stefan Roudet you are referencing. The 38-year-old oh, yeah. who came. Uh, he, he, nice he guy. He led the IMF team. Nice guy. But Stéphane my point Roudet. is, who leaves his house at Rage to go to somebody's house at Kanishi to say, Charlie, things are not going well in my home. Come and manage my home for me for the next three to five years. Who does that? And still says, we are brilliant. And even worse, you, you get Gabby writing things like, uh, the, the, the what is, is scary. The what? There's something they write. Outlook? No, no, the, the opposition or the alternative. The, ah, right, the right, alternative. Right, right. Dude, you are the worst. You are the worst. If anybody can say it, this is not about MPP, NDC, CPP, whatever. This is the worst government we have ever had in this country. The worst ever. Look yeah, at the all the metrics. History of our, Go and look at the I metrics. Mean, pre independence, we look had at the, the struggle, metrics. then post independence. Look at all the metrics. What, what makes this administration the worst? The worst? Bad decisions. Corruption. Worst nepotism ever. And promises not kept. All every man has is his word. Now, if you can't keep your word, you're not a man. And all every man can be is compassionate. But if you look at the monkeys that are in the sanctuaries and you look at somebody come to drop bananas by the roadside and all the monkeys run out and everyone plucks just one or two and runs back into the sanctuary to call other monkeys to come and get some bananas too. Do you know why they call the others to come and get some bananas too? Because they know that the bananas will rot in four days. So everybody must be fed. Now, if you are a human being and you can look at your country go to seed, you can look at your country get into debt and into slavery whilst you enrich yourself. If somebody calls you an animal, have they insulted you? Because we call the monkey an animal. Are you suggesting... The greed is I ugly. Mean, uh, the greed Kromer, is Kromer ugly. Kromer spoke about neocolonialism. But we're already there. Are you suggesting that on the back of our economic woes, we are slaves once again? Yeah, I, I, I used the word slave earlier uh, in a conversation, and one of my friends says, no, Chrissy, you can't say we are slaves. But is that, I just want to get it yes. Is that what you're suggesting? Well, um, I want a nicer word for slaves, uh, because we are not necessarily in captivity with um, shackles on our Hands are our and, brains and, 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 and manacles on our ankles. No, our brains are free. But some choose, some choose to feed themselves and starve their brothers. And also, you look at the Galamsee in this country. Mm. It's Ghanaians who lead people to the Galamsee sites. I have a few lands in Adansi. Now, if somebody goes to one of my lands, and digs a fish pond on my land. It's either they are criminal and I'll have them arrested. Or they have my blessing. That is why the fish pond is there. And they are rearing their fish. It's as simple as that. So who are the custodians of the lands all over Ghana? It's the chiefs and citizens in that area. The chiefs hold the land in trust for the people. Mm. But who are the people who are working with our locals to do the Galamsey most in this country. It is a nation we are greatly indebted to. All right. Let so we are even afraid mm. to arrest their people. And, and even as you start talking Galamsey, I don't want yeah. you to get too deep into yeah. that, but we have a few videos that we want to yeah. start playing on Fantastic. different bits. Let's watch these videos and we'll come back into the studio with KKD. Fantastic. I think it's important to look at it. First of all, how many countries are currently receiving IMF bailout and why are they doing so and these are countries that have failed in managing their finances mm. that's I think that's how you have to look at it we, we went because the bottom line we are going to the IMF because we have been reckless we have been to the point of even even what one could allege criminality in some in some regard you know, government has been overborrowing from the from, from the from the um, central bank. bank central bank and and beyond that we are having issues as we speak this year so far 
the CD is the worst performing currency in Africa this year so far. You know, so really, the idea is to see how that can help pop it up. We need the IMF because we have lack discipline in solving our own issues. But the money from the IMF, I'm not too sure how far that will go in resolving the issues. Because don't forget, two years ago, we went to the euro bond to borrow one billion. We still had issues. That by the middle of last year, our currency was competing with the criminals. And you know, what is the good news? At what cost? One, they say they will move all subsidies. Whether the subsidies are, are targeted at the poor or not, those subsidies are going. IMF are not necessarily interested in economic growth. IMF, their policies have never been to, as it were, help you create jobs. It is to make sure that, look, you can pay your debts, okay? It, and paying debts doesn't necessarily directly benefit the Ghanaian. Because look, in, in Argentina, they've stopped them from even, they have to cut down the, um, the salaries to what? Doctors and teachers. What are, in June, if you're not careful, what's happening with the doctors? So all these things are tied. Beyond that, what are the other things that they are looking for us to do? They're also saying that there should be Government should do what they call right sizing. You know, now they use terms. It's, it's really downsizing or just laying people off. But now they say right sizing because they feel that the size is not right. So lay people off. But clearly, it is not going to happen. Mm. Workers are going to suffer. And they're not going to suffer because the IMF says so. Okay. They are going to suffer because we have been reckless mm. in how we spend the money that we've been getting. Right. Because, look, bottom line, brother, over the last six years alone, Revenues from, from, from gold, they've been double what it was. You know, so at the end of the day, you ask yourself, where has all the, 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 the money gone? And mm. what is happening is that we are spending more and more money to pay our debts rather than investing in capital expenditure or capital projects, projects that will create jobs. So you are looking at it, the IMF will not create okay. jobs. The IMF will not make sure that the salaries match up with inflation. IMF will make sure that hopefully, hopefully, the reckless spending will, will go down. And I think that's the positive aspect of it. Okay, thank and, you. Thank and, you but in terms of thank expanding... You, thank you. We were happy that we found oil, but the borrowing of this government, the reckless borrowing of this government, has compromised the whole oil discovery. Six times, you need six times of our oil revenue just to pay interest, not even capital. It's interest on the debt. So it is a, a really sad development. I mean, what fundamental issues that affect this economy have been addressed in this budget? You should ask yourself, what fundamental issues? If we had spent, you know, the monies borrowed, and that money borrowed is the equivalent of some 35, 37 billion dollars over seven years. Now, can you imagine what 37 billion dollars can do in an economy? 37 billion dollars. I mean, it's amazing transformation that you can but you, you can see. The investment the government is talking about. We are going to add about 800 megawatts of power. But we are talking system. about a record. You can you can always talk. We are going to do this. We are going. The question is, what have you done? You've had 70 years in government. What have you done? I mean, your record should speak for itself. You shouldn't be waiting for the eighth year. The IMF, the IMF, they, they can point to even a lot. Oh, yes. They will point to the rich hospital. They will point to the... But when the Kufu administration was there, with such meager resources, so much can be pointed to as well. Infrastructure, as John Mahama says, if you point to infrastructure, you are engaging in an exercise of mediocrity. But the IMF managing director put the nail on the head when they said that the borrowing done by this government has been used for consumption. It's not me saying it. It's been used for consumption and not for investment. This is the IMF's assessment. And if you look at the data that supports what she's saying, the infrastructure to GDP ratio has come down from 9.1% when the President Kufo was in office to 4.8% today. Infrastructure, you've what exactly? I'm going to be unveiled on Thursday when uh, we address but you. you. I, 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 I don't want to, I can, of course I can, but I, I, I want to uh, leave that to breathe. But we are going to build a new economy, a different economy, 
and you will be hearing a little bit more because you cannot just criticize without providing alternatives and we are going to and we have anyway on your we are, you can tell us something after what exactly I'm telling you it's an exciting ahead. I will tell you what it is not it is not a doomso economy it is not a dead good economy yeah. it is not a friends and family economy yeah. right it is an economy that will create jobs The problem with Africa is that those who have ideas have no power and those with power have no ideas. <laughs> and, 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 and that in many ways still informs. So we have all, the, you have all these ideas on how we can green Africa. I listen to you and I can see you are bubbling with ideas. But you don't have the power. And the fellow with power has completely no idea. <laughs> To do with it, there was an orchestrating scheme even within the party and government to get you out. To get you out, so that look, why is it when I left now everybody is in the forest? At that time, we dare not enter the forest, yeah. you know. But as I said, I don't want to go into details now because I have a lot to say on that. Mm. But let me tell you that I did not take one excavator for anything, and they know the truth. Now, things are coming up, we know those who are um, behind, behind it. it and the party people who are there, people in government, including Jubilee House, who are doing Galamse and so on, even now. So, uh, let Frimpon Boatin stay in his corner and enjoy his retirement. <laughs> At least I am a coach. Let's say, minimum I'm a senator. I'm a senator. I'm a senator. i I couldn't help but laugh at that one. It's, now it's, now it's, you understand it's, me? I, I get you, but I just want to reiterate. Uh, some have said that it was almost as though some of these officials now in power were speaking to their future. You listen to Gabi Otredako, who is not in office, by the way. But the, the current vice president, we are going to build a new economy, a different economy, not a doomso economy. Look, I, Lights, there, there lights was a point where my, my lights have been going on and, and off. Three days ago, crazy. so now we have to look at just reactivating the generator. What, what's all this? On the back of all of this, though, how, how would you score the MPP now? I do this every time because I, I don't would, want. I don't oh, want, oh, to oh, score hold, I want them hold out it, of hold power. Hold End it, of story. Hold it. Let me. Go I, Poku, there's a reason. Who besides someone? I mean, you are not. There's a reason I'm posing that. I want. I want you to give me an answer. I don't want you to scare the issue on this one. Kojo Poku, an energy analyst, he's a flag bearer aspirant of the MPP. He scores this administration 75%. Do you then agree with him? Well, opinions are like noses. Everybody has one. And so long as you don't poke yours in my face, you can keep it as it is. Like I told you, we have gotten the point where people who are chuckling and fawning are licking people's backsides and saying they're eating ice cream. This is a bad economy. This is bad governance. This is selfish and greedy people in positions of authority. Definitely not all of them. But if you look at the deals that are going on, the, the nepotism, the no care for the poor people but themselves, even when we talk of school feeding program, who are the people feeding the children? Is it the government or is it the people who are lending this, uh, the foodstuffs to, to the buffer stock people? Who is suffering for feeding the children? What's wrong with us? Now, I, I look at all these videos and I ask every Ghanaian, for a minute, think like a human being and remember the words of Frank Kafka. He says, one fool is one fool. Two fools are two fools. A thousand fools are a political party. So stop thinking of a political party for a minute and just apply only common sense for a minute. And ask yourself, were these people who are speaking speaking about this administration, because everything they were saying applies to this administration. In fact, you, you heard me even talk about six years. It's this administration. And look, you need to check the rhetoric of all politicians. They are not carpenters. 
You see, when a carpenter says he does great work, you can tell by what he constructs. I guess that is why even in the Bible, Jesus came as the son of a carpenter. The carpenter who brags that he does great work will put a chair in state, and as soon as somebody sits on it, they will fall. For most other professions, even, in, even in, for doctors, a lot of times it is God who heals and the doctor takes the fee. But these politicians, I mean, beware of all politicians, but these ones now in Ghana, the worst government ever. So if he scores them 75, maybe he's scoring others 125 over 100. So you need to get a comparative analysis to understand why he scores 75. Good point. Let, let's talk corruption in the midst of all of this. The indices don't look good. Uh, in terms of the perception of corruption, in terms of the actuality based on work from the Ghana Statistical Service in collaboration with UN agencies. Well, what do you make of it? You feel the corruption every day. You feel it? You feel it every day. Is that palpable? It, you see, I'm coming. And then when you feel it, you question the feeling. Because feeling is not something you can use in a court of law. Mm. But then you see all these people who have only just gotten into positions of authority recently. One young man was talking to me whilst traveling with me to Suhum the other day. He says, boss, I, I thank you for speaking. And when I got to a funeral, these musicians who were supposed to be playing for the chiefs all just came out and surrounded me and were drumming and singing praises. And I said, well, <laughs> there's no praise for me. It's just praise for speaking the truth. And this young man was saying, look, I look at some of my friends who are not even brilliant in school, who have just gotten a few um, political appointments recently, and I look at what they have been able to do. Mm. And if I say it, people might say I'm jealous. I said, no, nobody's going to say you're jealous. You're just telling the truth. You live well. You know, you have a home in England. You have a home here. You live well. So you're not jealous of them. Just speak the truth. And if everybody would speak the truth about everyone in the community, we would see that the corruption is real. Like I said, many are mad, but few are roaming. Many, many are stealing, robbing this nation blind, but few are complaining. <laughs> and that is why we need all these voices to just sort of straighten all of us and get us thinking. Sometimes you, you read some of the comments we're getting, some very positive, others also suggesting that maybe there may be an agenda. No, the agenda, in fact, there is an agenda. The agenda is Ghana. And to put Ghana on the map and make it that land flowing with milk and honey. We, we already have the resources. Have you stopped to ask yourself why we're still wallowing in poverty and going back to the IMF? Questions we all should answer. It also reminds me, on this very trajectory, Kwame Pienim, again, saying we are being recolonized all over again. That's you know, anybody, Just to re-echo what, any, what he anybody, said. Anybody who cannot see that has a problem. Mm. You see, hey, Ghana. And, and, and thanks to Sam Saladi and my senior colleague for you know, reminding me of some of these you know, developments. But, but, but Samson, I have a conversation with you. You have a casa later. <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> that conversation will happen at some point. But, 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 but to wrap off the conversation, before we take your final words, Galamse has become such a menace. I don't know whether you followed recently. Cyanide. I mentioned the cyanide. Now we are, ki we're now we are fully killing aware. people to get gold. Cyanide, mercury, all of that. There's also the gold catch-up pro program, to be fair to government. They are trying to use that to take out the cyanide bit. But how many are there? How many of these are available to the miners? But the point to be made is it is becoming so destructive that the Ghana National Fire Service has said that even water... Yes, it's your beard, Dumja. Yes, sir. It's got to the point where it's so murky in some places that the Ghana National Fire Service is struggling to get water to douse fires. And Ghana, it's got to the point where a professor at the KNUST is saying, "Look, a, a medical, you know, is saying Deformities. we are having children with deformities. So many things are happening, and they are more exposed. About fifty percent plus exposed. In addition to that, Ghana Water is saying." The water is getting so bad, it's getting too expensive to treat it to make it potable. So very soon, water will be too expensive to drink. The people going to the Galamse sites are buying their bottled water to take there. What about the children and the boys and girls who are being used as though they were slaves in their own countries to do the washing? What water are they drinking? 
So if I talk of this selfishness and greed and total irresponsibility in positions of authority, Ghanaians must wake up and understand that when we elect people, we choose them as our brothers, as our kinsmen, who have some knowledge, but who also have goodwill and compassion to come and serve. If they don't have knowledge, we shouldn't choose them at all. But if they have knowledge, but they have no compassion, if they have knowledge, but they have no wisdom, and if they have knowledge, but they are not truthful, and if they have knowledge, but all they are worrying about is the wealth and the avarice and greed, so that they can fly in an aeroplane that they cannot afford, and within three months of flying in that expensive aeroplane, all of a sudden we realize we have no money. And we are all sitting there like, you can't be angry. My mother constantly reminds me, Chrissy, that this world is not our own. We are all just passing through. I said it the other day, Jim Reeks. It's one of my father and my mother's favorite songs. She, all, she reminds me of all that. And then my father reminds me, this world is not our home. I'm just passing, passing through. <laughs> you know, and then um, my father reminds me. He says, but once in a while, you must raise your voice against injustice. You must raise your voice against greed. Because if you do not speak against greed, the few greedy will prosper and the many needy will suffer. These very points you make, knowledge, wisdom, compassion, and others, President Okufuado rode on these very bits to come to power. Competence, compassion, listening to the people. What do you see in him now? Emptiness. I see emptiness? Em yeah, emptiness. What sort of emptiness? Just emptiness. Because it's all talk, no walk. All talk, no walk. Look, even in your own small home, if every time your children have to go to school, you have to borrow to the point where now you can look away for your wife to go to the bed of another man because you need that money before you pay your fees. You may not have shackles, on your hands and manacles on your ankles, but there is no doubt you're a slave. And if you live in a nation that has all this abundant greenery in every scenery, and you have all this plentiful water that you can use to grow food to feed yourself, but you import most of your food, and also even in the abundance of that water, your people are thirsty, it is not amiss for people to call you fools. I have a friend who's watching from the U.S., the United States, Paula, and uh, she says she likes what you're saying this morning. She's not Ghanaian, by the way. Oh, but I guess maybe. She's... You know, I think when people say that, it's because you're speaking their mind. Let's be fair. Mm. It is not everybody who is courageous enough or confident enough to speak publicly. Confidence does not just come out of a vacuum. Confidence is born of competence. So if you have some competence in some specific field of endeavor, you can parlay that into your confidence. Mm. And there are so many people too who are eating a little from the corruption that is going on, who are messengers of people in fleeting possession of power and some money, so they will never speak their mind. Those people, however, when they see you privately, they come and congratulate you. As I get wherever I go, chiefs and elders come in to congratulate me and say, we are Bema, we are Bema, we are Bema. Maybe we need a more yeah, men. A ya, Mumianka. A Nyansua, Mumianka. That is the way to go. Mamwe, Ankoye. A sha, Siano. Sabi dum son tea. And I'm come for two tea, and you are not a swap. And so you are not a swan. In Fidiana, you are debated dum so you need a man. On one a copper by. And you are before from a copper by. Now, so I know, so I be a year and a bonny be, and Tin and Cromfan to a man. Now, Bonny Crow, yea, and Tin and Cromfan to a man, and eh, yea, sha, you know, say, boy, set it if one no me a pickpocketer, and if one idea, only an armed robber. We'll leave it here, we'll hang the conversation here. KKD, Yabregu, Yabregu, a nation where the elders are not planting trees for children to come and sit in the shade. They are cutting down the trees, but first and foremost, they are plucking all the fruits and storing them only for their family and children. Hey, time. Hey,
That, that analogy of the monkeys, though, you know, it's a lot of food for thought. I'm going to share that on my social media today. There's a bit of a quote to it, and I'll, I'll be sharing that. But this has been our conversation with uh, Kwesi Che Dakwa, uh, the king, Nana KKD, uh, who took the time to join us this morning on the AM show. We've been talking everything Ghana. And uh, that last statement, though, about the president and what he sees, emptiness, You've left me with a lot to think about. But this is where we cap off this conversation at this point. But up next, we're going to be telling you about the GRA, the Ghana Revenue Authority's upfront payment by VAT registrable persons on imported taxable goods. And mind you, this includes vehicles at all ports of entry, 12.5% in addition. Where do we go from here? That conversation up next with Bernice Abubik Lanza. Do stay. <laughs>